Yes, was it? Um, many concepts and religions and philosophies from the East are extremely popular in the West right now. And one of them, a very important one, it seems, is uh, Tantra. There are Tantra workshops and, well, I have uh, attended some of them. And um, now having been introduced to your teaching, I see that they are almost totally opposite to what you teach about sex and love. Could you talk about this? Yes. Sex and love. There is no need to go to any tantric workshop unless you want to engage in sex. To love a man or a woman, and I have to speak from man, to love a woman means that I give. I'm not experimenting. I give to her. Love gives. Sex wants. Tantric workshops want to achieve something. They want to be free or they want to experience. Now love is a state of giving. So in the West the thing is not to learn how to make love or to experience making love at tantric workshops. The question is why are you unhappy that makes you want to have to go to a tantric workshop? Why? Does it not mean that you are afraid to love an ordinary woman? Because that's what it does mean. There are lots of women out there. All you've got to do is love one. Give. You won't need any so-called tantra then from the East. Because tantra coming from the East is an excuse for the West to get onto its favourite subject and activity, which is sex. There is no need for tantra workshops. It's just a matter of man loving woman. Any woman that he's with. The one thing that the Western world will not do, Western man will not do, is love the woman that he's with. He goes by his feelings. He's been taught to go by his feelings. And all his feelings are sexual. All they are underneath his feelings, of course, there is this rising from the depths of me. The rising of the joy and the love and the need to help to make woman beautiful and pure, for that is what man's love is for, to nourish her and to make her the woman that she is, not the woman that she's trying to be in the Western world. All he's got to do is love her. All he's got to do is say, what can I give you that I am not giving you? What can I give you to make you more beautiful, to get the emotion out of And woman's role, then, is to say, what can I give you so that you can be more of a noble man and a beautiful man because I have much to give you as woman? What can I give you? Instead of that, I demand from you as man and say, you're not giving me this, this is what I want. Woman says to me emotionally, I want this, and we are fighting between ourselves, our unhappinesses. Instead of responding, from the depths of me and saying, what can I give you, Lisette? Now, if you want something from me, Lisette, that is a demand, I would say to you, Lisette, I cannot give you that. I can only give you my love, my straightness, my honesty. That's all I have to give you, Lisette. If you want something like you're asking for or demanding, you'll have to go somewhere else. I cannot give you that. Or you would say the same to me as man, as woman. You would say that to man, if you were honest. But we in the West have not been taught to be honest. We have been taught to be dishonest. And so we address each other from ourselves instead of from the depths of me. Can I make it any clearer, Lisette? Well, I have uh, a different question. All this is about a man and a woman living together and having a, you know, a, love, a love life. What about um, me? I'm a single woman right now and have been for some time. Um, what can I do to purify myself? Everything is right as it is. So you, if you do not have a male partner now, then that is right. 
and you must rest in that, that this is right. So, the thing about the ordinary life is to give. If I do not have a male partner as a woman, which often happens for males and for women, what can I do is your question. Yeah. Give. What have I got to give? You have your sweet nature to give. Like I have my sweet nature as a man, say I did not have a partner. What have I got to give? I will give my sweet nature wherever I go. I don't mean my sentimental nature. I don't mean my kind nature. No. I mean just to speak to man and woman from the place where I come from. Not to give you my unhappiness, not to give you my sad story about what, how so-and-so did such and such to me, or so how I'm so sad today, so depressed today. That's not my sweet nature. My sweet nature is in everybody. It's a lovely day. What can I do for you? Right? If you ask me to do something that is, that is not right for me, I'll just say, no, I can't do that for you. I can't do that. I don't have to get all tight, but to treat you as, as my fellow, not as my a recipient of my unhappiness. That's what I've got to give. Um, and you will draw to yourself. Man, if it is right for you, you will draw man to you, a right man. But you must not give in to what you know is not right in love with any man. Even if it means you are without a man. You must not think, when you're without a partner, I'm missing out, time's running on, I'm getting older. No, no, no. You must continue to give my sweet nature wherever you go. And sooner or later, you will draw to yourself a man worthy of your sweet nature. Then, of course, it begins again. When you do draw him to you, what do you do then? Do you want me to say? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, then you have to be honest with each other. And you have to use the situation again. You've got to be true to the situation. What is the situation? The situation that is man and woman are together to enjoy their life together. But because we have been taught to live by our feelings, which is ourself, we will address each other as selves much of the time. Or our self will rise in the situation and demand something for itself. If it rises in me, that will upset you. If it rises in you, that will upset me. So I have to be vigilant and get rid of this self out of me, which would spoil us being together. And how do I do that? I have to be honest with you. If I wake up in the morning moody and I get out of bed unable to look back and smile at you or, or give you a kiss or take you in my arms, you can bet your life that I am considering myself. I'm deep in myself. My past hurts, so I'm moody. Then I would give you the right to say to me, why are you moody, Barry? And it would be my honesty. I would demand honesty from myself to say why I was moody. And as soon as I say why I'm moody, the mood starts to disappear because mood can only exist in dishonesty. But it is the Western way to avoid, to avoid the first question, always to give a nice excuse, which is to address the second question. And what exactly is wrong with um, sexual experimenting? Uh, why is that not compatible with love? Because again, it is trying to get. It is trying to, to find out. What is sexual experimentation? Say I am a boy and you are a girl and we're 14 or 16, whatever we are drawn together. It should not be an experimentation as such. It should be that I love the smell of you, I, I love the feel of you, I love the touch of you. And uh, if I had been brought up rightly by my society and by my parents and my teachers, 
I would have been taught that woman is a beautiful thing and it is the most glorious thing on earth for man to even stroke her shoulder and to touch her uh, to smell her is a most beautiful thing for man loves the smell the psychic smell of woman and I would have taught my son how to smell her just to kiss her to touch her hair so he would be prepared for when this movement happens in him towards woman he would already know it was a great privilege so when he first reached out for woman he would know what he was doing he wouldn't be experimenting he'd already know ah yes I do know the smell of woman because that's why I'm attracted to this girl and there would be a, a respect and an honoring and a love in it and not a hurry which is sex because sex is always going for the genital area whereas indeed that's how we express uh, our love but finally but what about the the smell of her what about the touch of her what about the strength of his arms that she must feel around her and how comforting and beautiful it is those things but we don't teach our children that do we no. so it begins with a dishonesty or a, a, an ignorance and unless I have prepared them for that, they're going to go for the, for the genital excitement, which is sex. If it is not embracing of the other that I've spoken of. In those Tantra workshops, um, as far as I know, a lot of uh, fuss is made about fantasizing. Fantasizing is being uh, advocated as a, as a good thing, uh, a thing to enrich yourself with. <laughs> Yes, I have seen this wherever I've gone around the world and in magazines and advice from teachers. Yes. And uh, as you know, I say that fantasy is the cause of all of man's unhappiness and therefore woman's unhappiness. Because man, while he fantasizes, can never love her. For he has a phantom woman. If he fantasizes, there are three of you the phantom woman that he's fantasizing about and you the real woman so if he tries to love you through a phantom you are going to be psychically disturbed by that oh he might get away with it or seem to get away with it but you will be psychically disturbed and that will make you emotional because he is not being true to love true to the situation which is to love you without having to go through some fantastic realm what about uh, women's lib, Barry? You, s you say uh, the new world will be not man's world, not woman's world, but love's world. Hmm. Um, but uh, how does woman have to liberate herself uh, to reach this? Woman must be in command of love. The Western world is the world of sex. And of course it is right through the east and everywhere, the whole world is God West. It is a sexual Western world. Woman is the custodian of love. Man everywhere is possessed by sex. It has, it has possessed him. Just as the West has possessed the world. The only hope is woman. She's in a mess because she's so emotional that she can't speak straight to man and can't be in command of love. Woman has to first of all learn to be straight. Learn to know not to compromise because she's missing out or because she fears she's getting old that she'll settle for sex. She has to say, like all the women that come to me, the ones that stay and listen to me, have had enough of sex. It doesn't work. They are all dying for love. And I come and distinguish between sex and love for them. They love it because they say, yes, I haven't made love to a man for years because I don't want any more sex. I say, of course not. Now you have to be responsible for love. How do I do that, she says. I say, you must never make love for sex again. She says, well, I'm going to be very lonely, aren't I? 
Mm. And I say, yes, if you want to be lonely, yes. But if you know what you're doing, something will arise in you, the integrity of love, and you will know what you are doing. And although your self and self-interest will rise in fear, I'm going to be left on the shelf, I'm not going to have a lover. Leave it to love. There is no other way, because the other way does not work. Then, when man comes to you and says, I want to love you, you say, you want to love me? Good, I'm always available for love. And then when his actions or his words suggest sex, she says to him, you said you wanted to love me. I'm not here for sex, but love always. Then he's got to ask the next intelligent question, what do you mean? What do you mean by love you? What is the difference between love and sex? And if he's man enough to hear a woman tell him the difference between love and sex, then he has changed. He'll give up his sexuality, his sexual fantasizing, and he'll then learn to love an actual woman's body instead of masturbating and fantasizing about some phantom woman. For that's all man's got to do, is if he finds a physical woman and they are attracted to each other, then love that body. Love it. Don't love some fantasy, because that will make her emotional. So the real woman's liberation is to liberate myself from the need for sex, the need for company, comfort, for someone to uh, screw in a new light bulb, that sort of thing, you know, the compromise. Yes, but there's no reason why you should not go anywhere. There's no reason why you shouldn't go and go to parties or go wherever. Yeah. There's no reason why you should not do that. Yeah. The only thing is that when man wants, does not, wants you for sex, which does not last, which will always hurt you and break your heart and make you self-doubtful, which is what the idea of sex. Sexual man always wants to make you doubt yourself, woman. As soon as he can make you doubt yourself, you're putty in his hands. I've noticed that, yes. <laughs> yes. But if you say, I am available for love, and only be available for love, then you are in command of love. And you won't be lonely, because eventually there are men out there who only have to hear from women what love's about, who are true, truly looking for love. There are men out there, but the West is so seized with sexuality and the newspapers and the magazines and the letters urging women to masturbate mm. and all the rest of it. It's very, very difficult. These are difficult times for love, as you've noticed. Yes. Why are men always undermining women's self-confidence? Because that's the way that he can overcome her. Because she is love. And if she, can, if she maintains being love, she will get rid of his sexuality. And he clings to his sexuality as a drowning man clings to a rope. He thinks without his sexuality, he's finished. So he'll always undermine her, make herself doubt herself, make love doubt itself, and then you get emotion. When love doubts itself, you get emotional. When love does not doubt itself and knows what it's doing, there is straightness, command, with a softness, a gentleness, an easiness, but a firmness that says, I am love, man. Don't try to play with me, with your sexuality. Love me, but don't try to play with me. It's finished. That, that's very beautiful to hear. But you do have to be valiant. Mm. And you do have to wait. But while you're waiting, give your sweet nature. Enjoy your life.